All right. Good evening and welcome to the regularly scheduled Sunderland Board of Selectmen's meeting. We're, uh, excuse me, select board meeting. We're a few minutes late, so getting everybody logged on here. Um, <clears throat> normally, we would have been scheduled for a 6.30 Eversource poll hearing, but that has been postponed until a later date. We've got a Riverside Park public meeting, but that won't start until 7.30, so we're going to try to get the uh, our other stuff out of the way in the meantime. So, and if we need to stretch out a little, we can have Tom update us on his uh, recent fishing trip, maybe, you know. All right. Um, why don't we do the minutes from our last meeting? And that was a. That was a Pretty busy one. We had uh, school updates, North Main Street updates, and highway equipment, and a number of other things that we went over. We have a motion on the minutes from last time. Motion. I'll uh, second the motion uh, for a little discussion. And um, that centered around uh, the school update that uh, Principal Ben uh, provided to uh, not just not just the select board, but the town in general about the steps being taken. And I think there's 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 a direct impact to where students' <laughs> times are spent and their impact on parents. But I think that we sh we should give full credit to the amount of heavy lifting that's being done uh, at the school to ensure that we can actually open safely. So I wanted to give a shout out to the team out there doing the work. Yeah, I would agree that that's a, and th and they have to plan not just one, but I think two or three different plans in case right. they have to fall back to you know right. a full remote or a partial. So yeah, I would agree. There's there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I want to just raise that point, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's an excellent point. Thanks. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on the minutes. <clears throat> All right, next up is our COVID-19 state of emergency update. Good evening, Lori. Good evening. Hey, hey EMD. How are you? Hi, good, how are you? <laughs> wow, have, so what's doing this week? I have nothing new. I thought I missed the EDS meeting, but I didn't. I think they're only meeting every two weeks now. So I was yeah. happy about not missing that. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I do not have an update. Um, Mima has stopped doing their daily check-ins with me, which I think is another good step in the right direction. Um, and I have an appointment set up later in July with our new representative from Mima, Alan Phillips, um, to talk about things, introductions. He'll be coming to the public safety complex and I will extend an invitation to um, Chief Benjamin and Chief Dimitropoulos to join. Yep, good. Nice. Good. That's Other the than best that, I have no new. Those are the best kinds of updates. Yes, they exactly. are. Exactly. Sure. Yes, you guys are. have been busy uh, dealing with brush fires, apparently, up there. And wow. Whatever yeah. they see, huh? It was a big one, yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks for... The Appreciate all of that. Yeah, yeah, this rain will help a lot with that. Yes, yeah. I, that's, what, that's what I thought when I saw that this morning. So hopefully we'll get a little more too, which would be good. Yep, for <clears throat> sure. All right. That's it. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, next up, we've got a North Main Street update, Jeff, huh? Yes. So last week we had a discussion about uh, maple tree and how removing it would allow us to straighten the sidewalk and avoid a permanent easement. Um, and just wanted to give MassDOT a heads up that that, that was happening. And, and this was something that the property owner and the town, uh, um, everybody involved wanted. And they said, well, you're gonna remove a tree that's gonna, cause us to do maybe an environmental review and a landscaping review, and it's gonna blow your whole timeline out of the water. <laughs> so 
Um, understanding that this process has already taken longer than anyone probably expected. Um, I, I, I think we're moving forward. Um, and I spoke to the property owner about this um, as the plans were designed. I, I don't think any additional delays would be good and would in fact imperil the project. Um, it, it's currently on the, the tip schedule on the mass dot schedule. Um, and and it, any any sort of delay would would jeopardize the three two and a half three million dollars um, in state and federal funds yep. that are going to go into this project. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, I think well, it's somewhat fortunately the tree is going to stay there. It's a, you know um, it, it's not in the best of health, um, but it it is a fairly nice tree. Um, but it still is going to require jogging around that tree. So I just wanted to update okay. everybody on, on where that stood, considering there was a discussion about it last week. And um, unfortunately, the project wasn't able to accommodate uh, what, what the town had wanted. OK. Yeah, the last thing we want to do is delay that, because that would not be a, a good thing. All right. Any, uh, any other discussion on that at all? or? No, I'm just going to interrupt the timeline of the project for the tree to resubmit and spend money in engineering and just leave it the way it is and we'll fix it the day of the show. Yep, yep exactly. All right. <clears throat> uh, now we go on to select board updates. Could, could I, Mr. Chair, circle back? Um, yeah. So, Jeff, we've had an, we had an appropriation an annual town meeting to take care of the uh, committed work for uh, the engineer is is that that's completed not the work but they understand that we have an appropriation effective July 1st and they're continuing to move on I, I don't I would hate to have something that says oh my god you know we didn't get paid or whatever yep the, no they're they're aware of that um, and I did communicate with them throughout this you know the tree discussion and all, and told them the town meeting did appropriate those funds and, and they're available july 1st so they great. didn't have an issue with that at all great thank you very much thanks good point don't want surprises cropping up that we haven't uh planned for there there's been enough of those surprises across across the totality of the project getting to this point so you know mm -hmm. we're a little our, our skin's a little thicker at this point yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, I'll, uh, I'll turn over to you. Any updates, Scott? Uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, we had our last, I'm sorry, last week we had our second um, police contract negotiations meeting. Uh, I think that the tone, my feeling is, not I think, my feeling is that the tone and the tenor are, again, uh, constructive, and that's helpful. Um, the agency brought forward some reasonable requests and uh, we're working through those to the best interest of uh, the mutual parties. Jeff, did I capture that well? That's good. Yes. Very good. All right. Tom? All set, Davey. Thank you. All set. All right. All right. And uh, I'm all set tonight, actually, too. I don't have any other meeting schedule right now, so. Um, why don't we go on to, I'll save the public comment for a little later and we can kind of roll that in, but it, it, does anybody have any comments now? Maybe we can do like non park related now. And then, cause I'm sure there'll be some public comments for that as we get into that meeting a little later, but <clears throat> all right. So our next item is the reappointment of Gail Mason to the council on aging. And let's see, I'm just rifling through my large stack of paper here. <laughs> yeah, there is. So she, was, she was not on the. She sorry. There, there is nothing in your list. Um, she was okay. mistakenly omitted last week. Um, from the list. Okay. From the list, and um, so that that's all that that was. Okay. All right. Um, do we have a motion for the reappointment of Gail Mason to the Council on Aging? Motion. 
I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on that one, Jeff. And we have next up, we have the draft Riverside Park conservation restriction. Yeah, so this is related to the last park grant that we received from the state. Um, one of the conditions is that um, a conservation restriction needs to be put on the acquisition of park land. Um, so this is sort of finalizing that. Uh, this draft has had an initial review um, from EEA and the Franklin Land Trust. Um, we've reached out to some of the major park stakeholders, Sunderland Youth Baseball, the Recreation Department, um, Volleyball Pathways, uh, Historical Commission, just to get their feedback. The, what we're trying to capture is um, continuing uses that currently exist, um, you know, ensuring that, that nothing that we currently do on the park would be prohibited um, and, and reasonable future uses as well. Um, I think the next step is if, if it looks good to the select board, we would say in, we, we have an agreement in principle, EEA would take a, a final look at it, um, we would, obviously want to send it to our attorney first um, for, for their review, but this is, this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, you forgot about, um, I don't know, the fact that we like to have a bonfire annually for such and such an event yeah. and we want to be able to do that. Or um, So if you, I don't know if you've had a, a chance to look at it yet or if you want to come back to it next week and um, we're hoping to to be able to get that conservation restriction signed prior to applying for this round of the park grant so that we can say check okay. that commitment right. off but so if i could mr chair under yeah. section 2a4 uh, reads cutting removing or Four. otherwise destroying trees grasses or other vegetation we know we've gone yep. to the extent of having some invasives removed down there. How do we capture that language to have to revisit bittersweet and not weed, right? This seems yep. to me like a blanket yep. statement and if someone sees, you know, not weed being cut back, that's vegetation. Yep, that's an excellent point. I would, I would uh, point you to section B1, vegetation management. B1. Um, no, not another section. So that's rights <laughs> reserved. Yeah. Yep. 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 Got it. Uh, Hang on. Be... Mowing, pruning, cutting, prevent cruel disease, infected fire, and contained then fields. Yep. Three Sorry, is not non-native and nuisance species. Perfect. Thank you. Um, ah, yeah. there you go. Got so, it. Yeah, it's here's all the things you can't do, and then here are the exceptions to the things you can't do. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. I, Want to just capture that? Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Do, do, do we do, do we feel we need like a to do to do this next week or how do you guys feel about? Uh, other than that? other than the the legalese part, right? The from a board's perspective, reserved rights and exceptions, right? Those kinds of things are a pretty quick read. If it's a prerogative of the right. board to wait a week, that's fine. But most of it is pretty legal right and we, i don't think it's been a while since we've had a bonfire back there hasn't it i think it has tom what do you think i mean there's there's some some of these things that you know are, are going to be captured that are specific to yeah i i, I don't know scott i, I mean I mean, posting notices about any changes, you know, that kind of thing is pretty straightforward. We're used to that. Yeah, we are. Right. It looks like the language is such that, looks to me like the language is such that it captures the elements that are important to, to protect the town as well as keep it available to uh, its designed intent. Yeah, I, I, I don't really, 
Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything bizarre in there. No. No. I'm I'm okay with it. Okay. All right. All right. Um, do, do you want to vote, Jeff, for that? Um, yeah, I think that, uh, that you a vote that you agree in principle uh, pending a final yep. vote on the final thing would be great. Great. Okay. I'll make that motion. All right. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There we go, Jeff. Three to zero on the conservation restriction. <clears throat> And then last on our regular agenda items, we have a mowing contract extension. <clears throat> so what extension are you looking for, uh, Jeff? That would be a one year um, contract extension to expire July 1st, 2021. Um, I know there was some discussion or desire to revisit the bid and put it out. And um, unfortunately, that that uh, I did not get to that. Um, mm -hmm. So I think rather than in order to continue maintenance of the fields and, and the properties, um, you know, the, the current contract would allow us to do that. Um, and I think I would be uh, I, I spoke briefly with council and they said just if the board is in favor of that just a vote to extend the contract for one year and authorize me to inform the vendor of the extension. Okay. And just looking at the areas. So it's all the same areas as before and everything. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, do we have a motion on the extension? Motion. I will second for discussion. All right. What a rest. So, so is our only opportunity for extending an annual based on this contract? It looks like that's the case. Yes. We can, we can do it for one additional year. Uh, I think there are two, two additional one-year terms. Right. So we could do it again next year. Um, I believe that there is an opportunity to terminate with 30 days notice. Um, so is it possible to, and I know, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, my, uh, one of my other hats is as a cemetery trustee and uh, frankly the trustees as well as the general public have not been happy with the performance of this particular vendor. So that said, and I'm gonna put my selectman's hat on now, I understand mm -hmm. that we can exercise this in a 30 day window. What would be um, a reasonable time uh, for us to be put out to bid again with in relatively short in relatively short order, or is that effectively a breach of contract? Um, well, I mean, it, I guess I, I'm, we have the bid document, so, uh, or mm -hmm. the bid document from the last time it went out, we could reissue that with very little changes. Um, not expecting the, full amount to, if we just did a one year contract and based on what was bid last year, um, mm -hmm. we could just solicit three quotes. We wouldn't even have to do a, a full bid process. Okay. Um, and so that wouldn't, um, I guess I would say no more than a month. Um, okay. and, and if it was a priority of the board, um, you know, I, I could have something ready to go within two weeks. So I'm not necessarily pushing to have something, have this rise to the level of a priority, but I would like to understand uh, maybe a little time within a month to look at attachment A again. And I look at it now and it simply says maintained areas, right? Maybe a little more definition. Uh, I certainly understand this. The trustees would love to talk about the defined areas. 
um, as a physical area, as well as the responsibilities around spring and fall cleanup. We know we've had feedback around ball fields and uh, at yep. the elementary school. Um, so maybe flushing out attachment A with a little broader scope, uh, I'm sorry, a little more definition in the scope uh, would help with whoever ends up. And the vendor can stick, the, the current vendor can stick to stick to a, a more defined scope and you know be the lowest bidder that's fine i have no issue with that however it has been it has been a challenge in some cases so i'm of the mindset if it's a project of the board to tighten up that scope and uh, set it out to bid no later than september 1st okay well, when, um, the, when when yeah, does, sure. does when does the when does the bid expire it expires tomorrow so, right no no yeah, but okay. no my my point is is right so it's going to expire tomorrow tomorrow is july are you sure it's july one we go from june, july we go from july june 30th sorry you're right oh. yeah it's really wednesday i would i would i would say that um i i go I understand staying on the fifth quarter, but they seem to be all strange dates to run a month. That time, but, mm -hmm. but you'd have to go across. You'd have to go across two fiscal years. I, right. I, 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 I very, very common deal with contracts, and I, I want to go in. And I, I haven't seen the documentation. People talk to the contractor to make. To express the pleasure, all that kind. Of thing. Good point. You, you know, I I don't know. I, I I I'm just you know somebody. If I don't know how aggressively we pursue as a town have pursued that, and and I would and I I've been thinking for a while that I don't know necessarily why person managing that particular contract. To me, it should be managed by the highway, the highway superintendent. And I, I think that I would talk to, I would talk, I was super, if, if I was to change the contract, Scott, the dates and stuff like you're talking about, I think we need to talk about who manages the contract, who's responsible for the contract. Um, and again, town administrator has enough things to do, and I don't necessarily know if the town administrator is the best person to be managing a mowing contract. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's a good point. So yeah. that's my thoughts on that. And kind of to your point, Scott, I think it'd be easy to just print off like a, a Google map overhead of the, each of the um, five areas specified. And, you know, we could even just mark out on there if we needed to, to get a little more visually specific. Sure. That might sure. Be, you know, be a good entry. Yep. Yep. I understand. So to be clear, Tom, it says it ends, the contract ends June 30th, 2020. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I understand. I, I just think that, and again, I just think that, I, and I understand why we probably go fiscal year to fiscal year. Um, but it seems like a, you know, and, and I'm just saying July 1st, typically when you get to July, you're not, mow, you're not, you're probably only mowing once every three weeks. You know, so I, I don't know. I, yeah. I would think we, but I, I, if I would do it, I would make it try to, so that we're, we make a, we make a contract for the growing season, but I can't cross fiscal year, which doesn't make sense. I mean, but, oh, you can but, simply make it, make it the calendar year. Then you, you know when you're starting, right? right? And, you, and you know when you're ending. And that be just as yep. that final, but so I I would look at the start and end date contract. I also look at trying to I would try to look I would incorporate what David says. And I also would incorporate that the uh, we shift from the highway from the town administrator to the to the highway superintendent. The highway. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Makes sense. All right. So 
We'll have to revisit that. So did I hear, um, I think there was a motion to renew and a second for discussion and the discussion was about um, working on the contract and coming up with some alternative dates and um, more specificity in the areas to be mowed and, and the management of the contract um, moving forward. I think that captures right. it, Jeff. Sound good? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Did I finish the vote? Yeah, yep. Okay. All those in favor based on uh, Scott's amendment? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero for more fun work on that. All right. Let's see. Okay. Um, do we think we can do our last item before 7.30? Yeah. Yeah. Um, would it be possible to uh, just give a, a couple quick updates? Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped yeah. over your part. You're right. Not at all. <laughs> um, yep, go for it. I just wanted to note that um, tomorrow night is, there's a public information session on the community choice aggregation, uh, energy aggregation, um, where representatives from Colonial Power will be available to answer questions. It's gonna be via Zoom. Um, it's on the town website and calendar. Um, and if if there isn't a great turnout, um, we're, we're talking about hosting another one uh, next week and trying to get the word out even further. Um, and, and also uh, um, talking about trying to produce a public service sort of announcement for FCAT as well um, via Zoom. So I uh, wanted to let folks know about that. Um, and then, uh, and this doesn't have to be a big discussion item, but the variable me message sign that's been out letting people know about COVID um, and yep. asking them to stay safe. Just wondering if, you know, the, I think the last three weeks, the update has been fairly quiet. Um, it's been, it's been up for, I want to say probably six weeks now, if not more. Um, and just for battery conservation, you know, yeah. do, do we want to maybe take it down until we need it again? Um, yeah. if you thought that, okay. I think that would make sense if I could, Mr. Chair, bring it in. Yep. That is a good idea. Okay. Um, and then the, the only other thing I wanted to, you know, is mention briefly about the brush fires, but um, Sunderland fire staff was up, out there three days. Um, they brought our Humvee brush truck, ATV, utility vehicle. Um, and I think that, you know, I don't know if folks realize how close it was um, to Sunderland and, and if the wind had been blowing in a different direction, that easily um, could, could have been in our community. And so just wanted to give a, another shout out to the firefighters for, for the mutual aid. And um, I think it's great that we have such a, a wonderful community. I know Sunderland wasn't the only one to offer mutual aid. There were other departments out there, but I think um, it was really helpful being able to have uh, our team go out there and, and help a neighboring community. They needed it. It's all good okay. stuff, and that's the reason we use mutual aid. Exactly. <clears throat> and luckily, we've been getting a little rain, so hopefully that'll minimize or at least knock that risk down a little bit, you know? Yeah. Good point. All right. Now, we still have a little time left before our 7.30 public meeting. Um, do we think we can cover our police contract discussion in that, that amount of time? That would be an executive session. Yeah. Yep. Jeff, how is it we slide into executive session and we know how to, we know how to enter and exit, right? It's an update on yeah. the contract. It's pretty straightforward. 
we're going to come back out by 7:30. Do we? And this current tool, uh, I'm, I'm obviously not there. Yeah. So, so I think that there are two options that we could take. One is we could mute all our microphones, shut off our cameras. I could pull up something that says, you know, executive session will return by 7:30. Yeah. Um, or I think we could say we're entering executive session. We can shut down the Zoom and hmm, I'm wondering what that would do to the live hmm. stream though. Right. Um, yeah, I think so, probably your first so, idea would be better, but. So but, topic, yeah. topically speaking, there's the, the, the only reason to really go into executive session is talk about particular details. I don't know if I'm yep. ready to bring particular details forward uh, and I can share both the tenor and the kind of content that we've covered um, yep. to date and I have no trouble and I would suspect that the association would have no trouble with it either. We've, we've, okay. we've, 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 we're working toward agreements in areas of education incentive and personal protective equipment and um, uh, private, uh, private duty compensation. That's, that's okay. the three that we're, we're working from and it's good. Uh oh, that's, some that's guy just, time. some guy just sent Jeff a note. John. Uh -oh. Sorry, just a quick note. I was just saying, you guys, if you wanted to still host it, you could move into a breakout room instead with just town admin and, and yourselves. Um, mm -hmm. You could continue the conversation off off to the side, as it were, and this stream remains, FCAT remains on here, and whoever else joins still joins um, is is the same. So that you know could be an option for you. Just wanted to suggest that. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. I, I think on, if we don't need to, I mean, does it, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. And, and I mean, I, I, it's nice to not go into executive session if you don't need to as a general rule anyway. So, yeah. and you're right. If you're, if you don't have any particular exact things, Scott, there's no point really doing that right now, I think. Right. So that's not, so what we could do maybe is adjourn. And then, like you were saying, if you want to put something up and then do it in German until 7.30 and mute everything, Jeff. Uh, that might be. Yeah. What are we, what are entertaining we, uh, a motion to adjourn? Yeah, what, a like, motion to adjourn until our 7.30 public meeting? Motion to recess. Recess, bingo. Recess, okay. I'll Sorry second the motion, motion to recess, to recess. and then uh, start the meeting back up at 7.30. All right. All those in favor? All right. Hi. Hi. Thank you. See you back at 7.30. All right. After a few technical difficulties, we're returning from our recess to conduct our Riverside Park public meeting. And I see we've got a few other folks out there I can see getting ready for this. So um, do you want to kick it off and do a little intro there with uh, what you've got, Jeff, for our topic? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the purpose of this public meeting is to gather input on the next phase of Riverside Park um, design and, and work and to determine the public's priorities. Um, we want to reserve as much time for, for discussion and ideas and suggestions as possible, but thought it would be helpful to go through a little history, some background information about the grant, the timeline, um, talk about the planned CPA funded improvements, and a few of the ideas that have been raised previously that we think um, fit really well with what, with what the EEA and um, PARC folks are looking for in the grant. And, I will mention that I had previously muted everybody, but you should be able to unmute yourself. Um, if you have any problems with that, um, right now I'm looking at everybody, so you can wave at me and um, try and get my attention that way. <laughs> if you can't, sorry. <laughs> Thank you all for waving. No, sorry. Um, so. And I, just to 
just to briefly interrupt for one second too, I think going forward too, I think it might be good if you sort of hold your hand up too visually, like if you if you want to speak that way, because it's so much harder in a Zoom context than a normal meeting. So that might be a good uh, like, hey, I want to talk. Yes. I know we do have the hand raise function, but sometimes that gets missed. So, <clears throat> all right, sorry, go ahead. Nope, that, that's great. Thank you. Um, so um, in 2017, I believe, uh, Sunderland applied for and received a, a park grant to actually create the river walk um, and the pathways inside Riverside Park. So the purpose of this application is to basically enhance and make improvements to, to what was done last time. Um, the park grant requires uh, an initial vote of the legislative body to approve borrowing, which was done at annual town meeting um, not quite a month ago. Uh, and the article was uh, authorized the borrowing of $273,305. However, I think it's important to note that the town is not required to spend any of this money if the grant is not approved. Um, so right. there's no liability on, on the town if we don't get the grant to, to do that. That being said, we're applying, we're, we're hopeful that, that we will get a grant and we will be able to um, make some nice improvements to the park. So our goal is to leverage, um, there's about $87,500 in CPA funds and that'll be discussed in, in a minute. Um, but what we really want to try and do is, is leverage that basically the park grant has a matching component where the local municipality needs to provide um, a certain amount. And I think in Sunderland's case, it's uh, at least, or at least 32% um, and, and we'd be eligible for 60% of the, excuse me. The last time we, it was 32, 68. Yeah, 68% the, the okay. state would cover. So, um, that's about $185,000, I think, in state funds that we'd be eligible for. So the last thing, and then um, I'll turn it over to Sarah and, and our library director, Catherine Hand, if she uh, wants to, um, to talk about the CPA funds. I just really quick want to talk about the timeline. So the application is due in just about two weeks. So a uh, very tight <laughs> schedule, um, which is Partially, we had to um, wait for town meeting in order to, to get that done. So, um, but assuming that we are successful, um, we anticipate that the award will happen by the end of the year and um, we'll be notified hopefully November, December. Um, construction design um, up to a year from now and then with a project completion by um, basically two years from now and that, that's construction and everything. So that, that's sort of the general timeline we're working from. And then I'll uh, turn it over to, to Sarah and Catherine to talk about some of the CPA investments um, recently in the park. So um, yeah, as Jeff mentioned, um, the way that we um, did what we've done so far in the park is by leveraging CPA funds um, to bring in a whole lot of other funds, including a park grant. Um, and that's, that's one of the great advantages of the CPA program that it allows you to invest in design that, which then allows you to get grants. Um, there, there aren't a lot of programs that actually pay for design. So this, this year we, um, we had CPA um, funding approved for Carlos who's with us tonight to do um, the next phase of design on the um, park. Um, and um, we also, um, as Jeff mentioned, um, had 80, about $87,500 approved for, to build two new recreational buildings or um, replace and upgrade to recreational buildings. Um, I don't know if you want to show the picture. Um, Carlos provided a couple shots and some plans. Um, do you have even? Oh, there he goes. 
minute. Weather delay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> previous. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Barcelona. Wow. <laughs> Been there. Real Madrid. Been there. All right, this is, there we go. Um, yeah. Right up. There we go. Okay. So what you see um, the, on the right is an overhead of the, of the whole park map. And then on the left um, is the existing shed uh, that's used for baseball. That's the first building you see when you walk in from the library parking lot. Um, and then in the middle left is the sad little shed <laughs> that I, if you got if you took the picture from the other side you'd see it's like it's at a, like a 30 degree angle um, but, um it looks like the house that landed on the wicked witch of the east um and so um and and there are a lot of concerns about the safety of that um that shed that's kind of falling over um so the the library um um Catherine, do you want to talk about, you're there, right, Catherine? Yes, I'm here. I'm happy to, to speak about this part of the project. Yeah. Um, so the library is was interested in offering kayaks to loan to the public to be used in the river, um, which was kind of the instigator of this whole project. And we were looking for a place to store those kayaks. And it, it made the most sense for us to store it in, them in Riverside Park where they'd be accessible. Um, and it didn't make sense for us to just create some kind of kayak storage um, when there could be other uses for, for some sort of facility. Um, so what we thought made the most sense for park users and the town as a whole would be to combine um, the kayak storage with some storage either for um, the recreation department or Sunderland Youth Baseball and then to also create some kind of shaded seating area, which was also needed in the park. Um, ultimately, it's been decided that it makes the most sense for us to, um, to combine that storage with Sunderland Youth Baseball. So the bottom left image is just a, a draft design of a facility where we would share storage with Sunderland Youth Baseball, um, replacing the top left um, shed, and then um, also create shaded seating that could be used to view view the ball games as well, um, as well as, as story contracts. Um, and then we didn't want to leave um, Jim Ewan and the recreation department with that um, shed in the middle there. So we, we also added extra funding so we could still replace that shed as well. We thought that was important too. And the design for the, uh, the second shed will match the the, the two designs will match. Yes, um, the UMass School of Architecture has very generously taken on the design portion of this project for us. Um, and so they've, um, we had a whole class of students create many different designs. And the, the draft design that you see on the bottom there is, is a mixture of, of many students' works um, that we thought would, would best meet the needs of the park. And, um, and the idea is that both sheds would, would be matching in, in some sense. There wouldn't necessarily be the seating area for the recreation department one, um, <coughs> would be a similar style of shed. So the, those, um, this, these two replacement sheds have already been approved for funding, um, for CPA funding. And, but, what we're looking at now is using, combining the, some of the other, um, the other needs for improvements in the park. We, we might as well apply for a park grant since we have the matching funds. And while we have the matching funds, that's what we did before that Sunderland taxpayers only paid for one eighth of what we did in the park so far because we were able to bring in so many, um, we we're able to leverage the CPA funds in that way. So that's what we're looking to do now to, um, the, this, this building here will happen no matter what, but we're looking to um, uh, 
to make some more to we're asking to make more improvements as well. Jeff, do you want to? Yeah. So Pull this up. Can everybody see the screen still? Did yep. it yes. change? Did it changed? Yep. Yes. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, you know, one of the major differences, I think, between the last park grant application and this one is that that was um, basically creating a, a new park. And so it got ranked very highly. And I think that's part of the reason that, that Sunderland was successful in the past. Um, I think EEA really likes the creation of new parks. And so we wanted to try to think of how we could be successful again and what elements would make a, a successful application. Um, and, and there were a number of ideas. Um, I think it started even at the ribbon cutting of, of um, the last one where there was a signboard and I think flying sharks was one of the ideas um, <laughs> that several people wanted. I, that did, um, unfortunately seems cost prohibitive um, <laughs> to genetically engineer that. But um, sure there, there were other ideas, um, children's play areas, concession stands that were bandied about. But I think that what we thought about is there are um, you know, ADA and accessibility things that that are are highly scored, and I think that are um, still a, a little bit lacking, even though much improved with the the pathways that were installed. Um, one of the areas is continuing a, a sidewalk um, along the boat ramp to connect with the River Walk and School Street. Um, you know, you can see that in the top left picture. Um, that there is no sidewalk. Um, and so it would require a, a retaining wall. There's a fairly steep grade. Um, and so putting putting that sidewalk in, um, I'm gonna skip the soccer field for a second. The um, bathrooms also, I think, um, are currently not accessible. Um, and we think that there is enough room in the existing footprint to reconfigure the, the restrooms um, to make them ADA accessible uh, and, and create the necessary um, paved spaces and, and um, you know, amenities uh, to make the restrooms accessible. And then um, the third thing that was discussed was the soccer fields. Um, and how we might be able to improve the conditions. And we talked about some ideas were regrading, um, reseeding, and irrigation. Uh, had had a discussion with the water district. Um, and I think it would be really difficult to, to extend um, the, the water district's water there. But some of it, it's very close to the Connecticut River, as you can see in the drawing. Um, so we talked about potentially digging a well to do irrigation there um, on the soccer field. Um, so those, those were the, the three things that we thought, you know, that's a, a recreational use that's used by a number of groups, um, the soccer field. So th those were things that we thought fit really well with the park program's goals. Um, and then I'll, I'll briefly talk about some of the other ideas that we have heard discussed um, and then really want to open it up to the to the public and hear what your what your feedback is on those um, three proposals for the park grant and what what else um, would you like to see there basically uh, keeping in mind that the application is due in about two weeks um, so uh, we talked about landscape improvements for the Veterans Memorial. Um, I'm, I have everybody up on the screen, so I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but basically this whole area um, is, is the, well, not the houses in here, <laughs> but um, the, the town owned property is eligible. So the Veterans Memorial is included in that. So we talked about landscape improvements there. We talked about baseball facility improvements, including um, an, a new backstop, I believe, for field two. Um, 
we talked about uh, new fencing. There's fencing along the third baseline and uh, potentially some fencing, matching fencing along the first baseline. Uh, we talked about improved, um, more permanent dugouts, um, benches, um, benches throughout the park, uh, children's play area, um, as I mentioned, concession stand. And I think the, the thing we ran into with the concession stand, while I think I've heard it had a lot of support, is we didn't really have a question to who, who would run it and how would it be stocked, how would it be maintained. Um, so I think there was a lot of interest in it. Um, there, there's more to think through on that idea. So that, that was the end of my presentation. I don't know, if Sarah, if you wanted to add anything else before we invite Only, folks to... It just occurred to me as you were showing this that actually the Veterans Memorial is not part of the 7.9 acres that we conserve, that, that we're putting into conservation. And I don't know if, I don't think we can use park funds on, unless we're put, and on land that's not being put into conservation. And it didn't occur to me till just now. We, we cut out the, the, from the conservation section, the library, the library lot and the town offices because we didn't want those to be restricted. So um, we'll have to look into that. Is conservation a caveat to the application for park, Sarah? Yeah, it's, it's part of the requirement. Oh, well, uh, wait, no, it has something to do with, we, we're gonna have to look into that because it's something to do with if you've acquired the land with CPA funds, that changes the requirement for the restriction. So we're, we're gonna have, we'll have to look into that and, and, and find out for sure. <clears throat> Sarah, I, can we I, do I more, um, you know, ben I know in the first round we eliminated like the benches or picnic stuff or um, any kind of play equipment or something. Is that something that we want to consider now? Um, yes, um, we, we can, we still have um, the, we, we, play equipment is very expensive, as you know, um, and um, but I think what you're talking about, we eliminated things that required um, extensive digging, because if we, if we need, if we, that was, if we were going to dig, we were going to be required to do an archaeological dig first, and we didn't have, we didn't have time for that, that would have killed mm -hmm. our grant, and we didn't have the funds for it. But now we did get uh, approval. We, we have the funds for an archeological dig. So if we, if we wanna do things that require digging, um, we could go ahead and do the archeological dig. We can also ask to be excused from it again, but that, that's the issue with, with, with um, digging to install permanent structures. And, and did we also talk about the possibility of moving some of the stuff that's going, if we get the new playground at the elementary school? Okay. Am I imagining this? Did we have a oh, conversation yeah. about possibly relocating anything that was, you know, interesting or in good condition over here rather than, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, that's, it, it, it vaguely <laughs> rings a bell. Carlos, do you know if there's any equipment that would be reusable? The short answer is no. <laughs> um, because the equipment that's going to be reusable will stay on the, we, we're going to reuse it there, which are the swings. Mm -hmm. um, the other structure that they have, the, the main structure, which is a wooden structure, the main issue that they have is that it, it, it's past its lifespan for not having um, the, the wood is, is splintering out. So you're gonna get a lot of splinters. So, and that's why we're basically doing the work at the school playground. Um, I don't know if, it, if it's worth because the, just the job, unless you've got somebody 
volunteer to install mm -hmm. it. But just to get a contractor to install that, plus you would have to have some safety surface. I, I think it's not worth trying to bring that old equipment to put it on top of new safety surface and drainage that would need to be installed underneath. Uh, because once people start complaining about the splinters on, on that playground, then you'll have to take it out and, and you're gonna be. So I don't think it's, a, it's the best thing to do. I, I understand the thought behind it because it's saving some funds, but, but I think that whatever we take out of there, it's not gonna be worth trying to install again and invest in installing and having safety surface basically the, that you have to install that's pretty expensive that goes underneath. And then the, the piece of equipment that's working there, which is the swings we're gonna keep. Um, and what about any other landscaping elements in the park itself? I, I know we've lost part of the, the tree that was kind of questionable, we've lost part of, it seems like honestly, that whole entry sequence um, mm -hmm. is not really great and you know, it was, you know, we were trying to save the tree, but now that seems like a problem. Like, you know, is this an opportunity to work on some of the plantings? Yeah, we, we, I think we talked about it and we've started putting some numbers on what it would mean to have, you know, two or three more extra trees, especially thinking of that area. We're, we're gonna have a new building there, right, right in that area. So it, it's definitely has to be well planned where that extra, another tree goes. But it was talked about, um, and I think it would, I did put some money at some point or some costs on, on what that would be. So yeah, it's a pot, definitely a possibility. I think one of the things that happens with trees and Sarah can talk to this maybe a little bit more is that it's one of those elements that's easy to get through donations as donated, you know, kind of memorial trees or, or, or donated tree. Um, so in my experience, it's, the hardscape, the fencing, that's the sort of stuff that's better to get through a park grant. And then trees and benches are things that you could probably get through um, people donating, you know, creating some donating uh, donation fund. But, but I, I, I would love to see both, <laughs> trees and benches. I, we, Jeff, we did have a, a question out there in the chat about were there any specific um, upgrades to the Veterans Memorial discussed? So there was talk, I mean, I, Sarah, I, I, if I remember, there was talk about one thing that people were mentioning was about some type of irrigation system to the Veterans Memorial or something to that effect, which I, I think it's, it's something that could be done, but it can, mm. the plantings that are there are, 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 are meant to withstand a certain amount of, of, of drought it's not like you have lawn and turf or you know sports surfacing <laughs> that you really want right. to be watering all the time and maintain so I, I mean it is it is a possibility I think it's it's just that it, it is costly to put an uh, irrigation system um, and I don't know what the extent of that would be but what I did was I, I put a general kind of lump sum number for general improvements of replacing plantings that are not may, might not be in the best of shape um, adding any other plantings that you needed to do there and just a refresh of the space, you know, taking out all the mulch, uh, aerating any yep. areas that need to be aerated and kind of, you know, re reestablishing back the park. Um, so that was more of what I was thinking of a general veterans memorial improvements. And then again, there was this talk about a irrigation system, which uh, it, it could be an improvement there, but I don't know if it's the type of investment we, we really want to do there. I spoke with right, Nikki thanks. Ahern a couple of uh, months ago, um, and he he's, I think, the last person left on the Veterans Memorial um, Committee. Um, we need, we really need, uh, the, the Veterans Memorial needs uh, some champions to kind of get involved and, you know, um, come to meetings can't be in their cause yeah yep. um but mickey mickey mentioned um that a tr they have a tree that needs to be replaced and he said the grass is kind of chewed up and and he said well we never installed an irrigation system so um that that's where those ideas came from i, I have another okay. water question and the water question is is there going to be water 
that's connected with the um, kayak building, like on the outside of it. What I'm thinking is to both wash kayaks and wash, yep. um, you know, maybe drinking water and also even to wash dogs. Um, I happen to be a big dog walker. So I don't know if there is any going to be any water next to the kayak building. Yes, that's part of the plan is to add, um, to connect it to the, the water system that's that's part of the restroom already um, so that we can at, have a, a small water source there if it's just a spigot to connect a hose to so we can clean the kayaks and, and for other uses as well. Wash your feet when you're done at the river, wash your dog, I'm fine with that. So that is part of the plan. Catherine, did you, did you go um, talk with the water district about that already? No, I'm sorry. I am behind, I have to say, but that is part of our, our talks, is <laughs> figuring out I, exactly just, how that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm just asking because, you know, we talked to them about the irrigation of the soccer field, and they said, no, we, we don't have enough water. You can't use water district water to, for the soccer field. Yeah, my, I mean, my understanding is that um, a small spigot would, would use a lot less than an irrigation system, but you know, need to talk with them still. So that is not necessarily a finalized aspect. It would be very helpful, and it's something that we definitely would like to add as long as it's possible. Right. Well, what, one of the things we've been talking about is, I mean, Jim Ewan has been waiting for years for the soccer field to get... Um, rehabilitated and um and the thing is it's not really worth reseeding the soccer field without having irrigation like look at the last month that we had around here it just wouldn't survive that so um and but since the water district said that they couldn't supply the water that it would require a well so um if we if we dug a well there would be water available <laughs> mm -hmm. so we had two uh chat comments that i just wanted to address and then we Thank can you. um go back to taking other questions um the first isn't the slope of the bank too steep for an ada sidewalk next to the boat launch driveway carlos i think you looked at that and determined that it would be possible to to put an ada accessible sidewalk there right yeah, according to the survey that was done um, for schools when we were doing School Street, um, it seems like we're right at the border of being able to do a 5% uh, walkway there. Uh, what it is definitely steep is the side slope um, that, and if you see on that picture on the right side of the picture, um, it's on the, the, what's on the right of the actual pavement. That is pretty steep um, and it would require uh, basically a retaining wall, sort of what happens at the end of the, um, of the uh, uh, river walk. And at the highest point, that retaining wall would be about four feet high and then it would taper down to about a foot as it gets closer to the other retaining wall. It would be basically match that one. Um, yeah, I think the, 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 the higher challenge, again, based on the survey, it seems like we can do the, uh, a longitudinal slope that would work 5% going down. Um, what's going to be, again, the more challenging part is the side slope, and it would require then a retaining wall so we could create a, basically what we call a bench cut. We could actually cut that in and, and have a walkway there that's ADA accessible. Carlos, is that within 200 feet of the river? I'm just thinking that in terms of permitting, this is going to get complicated. Yes. And I'm trying. It will. I would love to see a project that was as simple as possible since, you know, time is of the essence here. And So it won't be within the riverfront. It will be within a uh, floodplain. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be an issue of filling on the floodplain. So that's why I'm not as concerned on the permit because we will be cutting. We will be cutting. So we will be, and, and just a very, very, very general and overview, when we go for a, um, when there is a floodplain, we have to provide compensatory storage. So if we fill, we have to provide somewhere in that same area where we've taken some material so we can balance the site out so that we're not pushing flood water. But in this case, there's no fill. We will be cutting the material out and taking it out. So it should, in effect, it should be a pretty straightforward um, floodplain product. Um, and that would be paved and impervious, or that would be stone dust? Um, no, that would be, I would recommend, 
I would recommend asphalt just yeah. because it's just long, longer lived material. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend the asphalt. If, if it's something that we can't do, then we, we, you know, obviously we could, we could go to uh, stone dust, but with that slope and you're going to have issues with erosion that I would prefer not, you know, because then it's a recurring maintenance issue. I, I would say also, even environmental wise, I would prefer not having issues of erosion there because those are going to definitely wash out into the drainage areas that were created for the boat launch. And then that could, that's just silt and, and, and things that could go to the river. So my recommendation is to uh, pave it, um, pave it in asphalt. And would that sidewalk be a continuation of the school street sidewalk? So eventually would. I mean, obviously this project cannot, uh, it, it goes way beyond outside of the scope of the project for the park grant if we were to do the whole sidewalk. No, but I they, mean, that's part of the sidewalk that we're doing under the school street project. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be the, it's okay. that last piece that connects yeah. from the, okay. from boat lunch to the, to that crosswalk. Or yeah, I, potential I, crosswalk. I figured with what's, am I on? Yeah, I figured with what's happening with the economy, um, it could be a long time before we can fund that school street redesign. <laughs> um, but um, at least this piece, um, we could possibly get done. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be a big safety improvement um, because we're seeing a lot of, a lot of people use the river walk and, uh, and they come out um, that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just down there um, last weekend and watched somebody, people drive from pretty long distances um, who are in wheelchairs to, to come down to the river. And, um, you know, I watched somebody get out of a car, get a wheelchair out, get all set up, and then they headed straight for School Street. They didn't go, um, you know, the parkway. They went straight to School Street to get down there. So, um, it's a, a, a cool. Oh, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, I, the um, second comment, um, the open space surveys had a handful of comments requesting a little child play structure. Um, this might just need wood chips as a safety surface with low climbing slide, that kind of stuff. Um, I thought I read, and, and Carlos, you're probably more up on this, but I thought that there was updated guidance on playground and that, and, and I don't know whether wood chip, are wood chips still? A... So that, that was there, the Massachusetts Access Board had put out a draft of, which was a draft for about 10 years, um, until, even until that last year it was still a draft. And it went through a last comment section um, basically a year ago. It never went through. So it's still a draft and it's still, they're still thinking about it. Uh, but what they said was that they were gonna basically uh, phase away any wood chip and everything had to be a rubber poured in place rubber surface, which is uh, instead of having some loose material, this is a totally consistent, uh, wanna call it solid material of rubber that even though it lets water infiltrate and it has cushioning, um, it doesn't move around. It's a, it's, it's, it's a in integral surface as we would call it. Um, so that's one, one aspect of that. The second aspect on, on ADA and wood chip is that there are three case, cases that were brought up um, to the MSBA, uh, to the MSBA, to the uh, Massachusetts Access Board, MAB. And in those three cases, um, the wood chip, wood chip would have been accepted, uh, but they would need to provide a maintenance plan and a maintenance schedule. And they had to prove that this maintenance was being done. Um, and in the three cases or two of the cases, basically municipalities said that we, you know, we don't have staff to staff to do this maintaining, maintaining a, a record on how many times you are basically sweeping the wood chip so it stays totally level. So, mm -hmm. it, and that is a complaint base. So it's not like, it, 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 so there is, it's kind of a gray area, let's put it that way. Our recommendation in the office has been to move to the rubber surface 
uh, for areas underneath the playgrounds, following what the draft of the, M the MAB, the Massachusetts Access Board was saying, because in lack of that, you could do wood chip, but if there was a case, if somebody complained about it to the MAB, to the Access Board, then the town would need to either change the surface to rubber or would have to provide constant maintenance showing that the surface is level all the time. Um, and that's possible maybe in a school environment, maybe. Um, I've tried to convince some schools to do that, but they don't have the staff to do it. But uh, at a municipal park, it is very hard to do that. Um, I would say that I've never had the opportunity of having somebody just sweep and get the wood chip always uh, stable. Um, so again, kind of a gray area right now. There is a draft saying that you can't use wood chip. There's some case law that says that wood chip would be approved, but you would need to provide maintenance to it, daily maintenance to it, to maintain it to be totally flat. Um, and that's where we're at. And the recommendation in our office has been to move towards the rubber surface because it's just very, it's very hard to maintain the wood chip without having some staff constantly being there and kind of managing it. So that's, that's one thing. Also the cost of the, of the rubber was extremely high for a, for a while. And there is a possibility now of actually buying it through a state contract, including the installation. So the cost of the rubber has, I would say significantly gone down uh, from what it was two years ago, where it was really, really, really expensive. And now it's come a little bit down with that strategy. So that's where we are moving forward with, uh, with safety surface. Thank you. And there's uh, another chat question. Um, I, and I think this is again for you, Carlos, um, more yep. specific about the uh, sidewalk um, seems to be a small area. I don't think there, there was a question about removing of the plants. I don't think, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's weeds. Um, it's not any sort of plantings, right? There is, yeah. Um, what's, what's happened now in that four feet, there were some plantings that were done higher up, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right at the top of the slope. Uh, but where we will be doing the work is at the toe of the slope. So it's right at the base where, and, and we're talking about a walkway that's going to be five feet wide. So it's not, we're not, you know, uh, it's not that big. Um, there are some existing plants there. Um, we would need to see what's there. There were a lot of invasives that were growing up in some of these areas. These are all areas that were, um, there was a big tree here a couple of years back. So now it's opened up and basically everything that was, you know, every, any seeds that were there started to, to uh, grow. I, I, from my recollection, I don't remember seeing anything there that was in particularly important, um, you know, species wise, but we would definitely take a look at it. Um, what I know that there is there, uh, there's some milkweed that's been growing. It's it basically our, our, your typical weeds that grow when you open up a site that's been in shade, deep shade for a long, long time. And all of a sudden it just opens up. Um, so, so yes, yeah, some, some of those weeds will have to be removed, but I don't think there's anything that's been long lived or lived there for a long time. And Carlos, can you talk about the the width? I think there was also a, you know, what what's the width of the roadway and is it, I think that's what the commenter was getting at. Is it is it too tight to put a sidewalk there? Um, well, that, that's the, I think it's the opposite. It's, it's really tight. It's about nine feet uh, or 10 feet. I, I can, it, don't have that exact number in front of me. Let me double check. I think I have, I can check. Um, I would say it's, if you give me one second, I can, yeah, let me open this strong. I'll give you the number. It, it was, it's very narrow in my, in my sense is that by having the sidewalk next to it, and we can delineate the sidewalk, meaning uh, there will be probably some line striping or something to delineate that sidewalk so it's not, doesn't melt with the uh, walkway. Also, there could be a curb, uh, asphalt curb, the same way that there is one already on the other side to separate it. Um, 
So the argument could be made that the, the road is so narrow that if you had to match pedestrian traffic and a car at the same time, both of those would be in conflict. So having an extra five feet, which is what we are proposing for the sidewalk, would provide that extra space for somebody to actually walk on the side in a car to be driving down. Um, so I, I kind of you know, respectfully disagree with, if I think the, the road is so narrow that having an extra five feet on the side with a little curve, uh, asphalt curve that would separate it would be actually a benefit uh, because it would provide some walking while a car can actually still go up and down. And if you give me one more second, I will give you that exact number of the width of the path. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say I agree. I, I go up and down that roadway with my dog a lot. And if there's a car coming, I have to either get down fast or come back up. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. It's not really much because it's so overgrown there now. There's not much room for myself and the dog with yeah. the car. I agree. And once the weeds, um, you know, again, uh, visually, once we have we, we have that retaining wall and and some of these weeds are cut back a little bit so that we can have the walkway, you'll have also better better yeah. view. Uh, so right now, as per the survey, it calls it out as eight feet wide for the. Uh, for the drive going down and and that's 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 getting getting to be very very narrow you know in a, in a, an average a, a vehicle is about six and a half feet but that's a car you know if you have a big truck um you could get to the seven feet and you have your you know side windows coming through so it's, i agree that it is too narrow and probably if you if you're trying to walk it while a truck is coming up you're going to have to either go to the side or you know go to the top because you're not going to be able to walk at the same time. Yeah, and you can't really go to the side now with all that knockweed on the side. And oh, yeah. Just, yeah. There's no place to go. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, are we going to do some planning, though, for items that might be donated, like the tr trees or shrubs or any of this um, landscape furniture? Is Are we going to kind of show that but not ask for it as part of the grant just so that we have a goal? I'd like to do that, yeah. Um, I do have one question about um, like maintenance on this, Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, have we like started to catalog? Because clearly there'll be some items that are, you know, we're gonna have additional maintenance for. I mean, I, I the, obviously we the park has been fabulous and everything, but I'm, I'm thinking too, like we're gonna have to maintain some of the new stuff. So we started cataloging. Um, the new items and any new maintenance procedures or anything, because if, if we haven't, it might probably be a good idea for that. And then we probably have to discuss like who would be responsible for the, for the maintenance on that. Yeah, we're required with the uh, grant application to have put in a maintenance plan. <laughs> and um, and so okay. we, we did a five year maintenance plan and budget when we did the 2017 application. Um, and this is the first year that we're needing, you know, to um, spend some money. We've got to kind of um, top dress the stone dust on the walk. And um, yeah. Um, but the, you know, as the years go on, the maintenance is going to increase, and that's that's something that um, I it has been a mantra <laughs> um, um, that I've been saying to the town that all all of the, we we we've, we've been very successful in bringing in funds um, uh, to the town, but none of these grant programs pay for maintenance. And that's the part that the exactly. town has to um, step up and, and do from our town budget. Yeah, right, yeah. And I, so right now we have a line of 5,000 a year and it's gonna need to grow incrementally. I mean, that's for every, yeah, everything, not just the river water. Right. Because yeah. I'm thinking, like I know, I know the water got pretty high and close. Um, was it last year up to mm -hmm. to where our our lovely platform is? You know, and I mm -hmm. hate. I mean, at some point, inevitably, it, it will, and hopefully, it'll you know won't get damaged much. But it's almost like we might have a little. Con I don't know if we can do that, but have a sort of a contingency fund too, mm -hmm. um, for in, in case if that happens. You know. Yeah. 
good point. There, hey, Dave, there's a just dock. What's that? You turn the overlook into a dock. That's fine with me. <laughs> Do a dock <laughs> and start charging mooring fees, right? <laughs> there you go. Put a, put a couple of fish on, have a dock, and now we've got a harbor. We're all set. There and a driving platform. We're all set. All right. right. And then maybe we'll put a little bar in there, too. You know, <laughs> there you know, you a cocktail by the water. No <laughs> oh, bars. <laughs> yeah. A juice uh, bar, maybe. I, I have, I have yeah, one. There you go. I have one other quick question. It has to actually do with the little kayak, um, with the kayak building. Um, I noticed when I was down there last week or the week before in the sort of southwest corner of the ball field that there was a number of um, people that had sort of opened up just chairs and they were playing music and it was very lovely. And they were underneath that tree that was right there. And that it was me. No, oh, was it you? You were part of that group? And, but I wondered if it made me think that, you know, is there some way that we can use the um, the kayak building or even that little space in the southwest corner of the ball field as, you know, and then maybe that's where you put down some of the wood chips or whatever. And, and then you could just have a place for people to sit and play music. I don't know. I just thought it was lovely listening to you guys. If you were the one, if you were there. I'm sorry I didn't say hi. It's, it's kind of hard to see from the size of the picture, but... Um, so there underneath, um, you know, there's like a little um, awning over the, what yeah. we call the seating area. And there's actually big tables in between each of the three benches. And so those benches actually store the contacts, but, uh, but they, as far as anyone will, can tell, it's, it's a seat. Um, and so the idea is that um, folks can, can have a seat there, um, use it any, for anything they want to. It's within, um, you know, you can see the baseball game from that location, but baseball game time so that there's um, plenty of different uses for it so we, we the, the whole idea is that folks would be able to use that for anything they want to oh, love lovely. To music there yeah oh lovely yep thanks there was another chat question um about the application and and economic justice argument um about who might be using the park and um how much the bathroom would cost and uh, what percentage of the grant funds. So um, certainly planning on applying as an economic justice community. I actually reached out to um, FERCOG to see if they had an updated map. I think the one we used last time was already two years old um, and they don't have an updated map. So we'll be using the same 2015 map but we are, uh, Sunderland is an economic justice community. Um, so we're certainly going to be, um, you know, highlighting that in the, in the application, um, bus routes, um, who park users. I think a lot of that uh, information is is still applicable from the last application. So we're certainly planning on incorporating that. Um, the bathroom cost. We're investigating that still. I mean, we have an initial. Um, I won't call it an estimate. What's what's the phrase, Carlos? It's a budget. Um, budget number. <laughs> budget. budget. Yeah, we have a budget number, um, and I think it would be probably about a, a third of um, the total grant funds. But I think it's very malleable, depending on what is required. And I've talked to the the building commissioner and asked him to take a look at: Are we going to need to? replace the actual toilets are we going to need to replace the sinks or can we just move them you know are, are they at appropriate heights you know those types of things so um and, and that all has a cost impact so we're looking at that i think we have an, an initial estimate um of, uh, or initial budget of about uh, fifty thousand dollars for that um, for those improvements, uh, but we certainly need to do additional investigation to tighten up that number and, and find out exactly um, what improvements need to be made. And I will note that we, I did look into, because there are specifically ADA grants and we said, is any of this, you know, could it be funded through another grant program? And 
they the state has not yet opened the the next grant funding for the ADA grants. So we looked into that. The, the website hasn't been updated. Um, so I think that there's potential additional funding sources, but um, it's unclear right now whether or not we'd be able to access them in fiscal year um, 21 or not. So in the current, in this is Scott. So in the current environment, knowing what we're doing with uh, respect to coronavirus and the type of use, why would we have bathrooms out there anyway? It's gonna be the most expensive part of the construction outside of the archeological dig. I don't think the need for bathrooms is going away, coronavirus or not, so. I understand. My question is, why would the town be providing it? What's the what's the alternative? I mean, we're already providing them. It's whether these are going to be accessible or not. I mean, what's the alternative, Scott, to to not have public bathrooms? In in that in that space, uh, it's a, it's a question I'd just like to have out there. I mean, I think the more realistic thing to do is to consider, you know, should they be better ventilated? Should they have, um, you know, should they be hands free? Um, you know, I, I just, I don't think that the need for bathrooms is going away. And I don't think this is going to, you know, I think we're hoping this isn't going to be here forever. We're going to have to rethink all that kind of stuff. But. And and Lauren, if, if I could, please, I, I think Scott, Basically, by having having the bathrooms there, um, you you open up recreation to a lot of people that may be able to use recreation. You you use it up to uh, uh, children that may not have the same mobility as um, all the other kids. Uh, also, um, Sunderland is one of the only places that has in indoor indoor plumbing at their ball field. So they're and, and it's been that way for a number of years. And you're and you allow um, boys and girls to, to use the facilities without having to go in sandy cans or whatever. And I think you, and, and in the age of coronavirus and stuff, I think you're, you're actually promoting health by offering people an opportunity to go into a, into a location and actually wash their hands with soap and water versus using alcohol. So I, I think there's a, in my opinion, I think there's a lot of reasons why we would want to maintain and actually promote use of bathrooms like that. It's all, it's all part of my Libra curse. I have to ask that question. <laughs> and it, 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 ties question. In, it ties into to David's you know, earlier point about maintenance. I mean, there, there are certain requirements for public parks that have restroom facilities as far as regular cleaning of those facilities and disinfecting. Um, so yes, I, I think that while we hope that, um, you know, this isn't an ongoing phenomenon with COVID. Um, you know, the, it's certainly something to keep in mind as we're making our maintenance plan of um, who's going to be doing the cleaning and how regularly that's going to be and what those costs are for, for supplies and, um, and staff to do that. And if I could, Jeff, Jeff I, I, and Sarah, I, I, and Jennifer, um, and Nancy um, from the, from the um, um, CPA or CPC, whatever, CPC. Um, one of the things I talked with Jeff the other day was about um, monies that may be available that we could use to fund a position for disadvantaged youth um, to maintain our park and our recreation areas. To, and, and so Jeff is looking into that, but um, I, I think one of the things, you know, is if we could, if we could potentially offer some of our youth positions um, and, and in particular maintaining our park right now, it'd be a great way to, to, to get kids involved in town and give them something to do as well. So, so we're, we're trying to look into that as well right now.
All right. Do we have any other uh, questions or information? Uh, can I just take a moment of appreciation for um, Sarah and Carlos, especially, who I know have put in hundreds, if not thousands of hours in um, creating this park so far, and it's really been life-changing, and, and the timing was perfect, and that, you know, so many of us are, you know, closer to home, you know, looking for ways to um, appreciate what's around us and to get out of the house and get out and you know the path has gotten so much use the park has gotten tons of use i mean there's so many kayakers and paddlers out there it's just been amazing and i just want to take a moment to um to thank them for what they've done thank you nancy That's on point yep. Yep. okay well if there if there are no more comments or questions, then I'll thank everybody else for, for coming out and participating. I think it's, you know, obviously not, not the ideal climate for, for public participation in meetings, and it's often difficult, um, but we're doing the best I can to, best we can to gather this information and um, put this together and, you know, uh, really appreciate folks chiming in and, and providing this feedback. Um, Know, going to take it back and a relook at the application. Um, again, there's not not a whole lot of time um, between now and when it's due, but I, I think that we have some great ideas, and um, you know, we'll we'll keep our fingers crossed that that we have a successful outcome to the application. So, um, and I don't know. Um, if the select board had any closing thoughts on on the meeting or actually i do have one question um pathways committee do you guys have any meetings scheduled for the near future we don't have one on the books but i we could put one on the books what did you have in mind uh i i i, I I've been really looking at uh um you you guys the pathways committee has done a beyond doubt um, some of the, the things that you've worked on grants. It, it's, and, and kind of parroting what Nancy said earlier, if you look at the number of people using the, the walkways that we have town, then, you know, if you look, I mean, along uh, Main Street going down to the apartments and Hadley Road, and then mm -hmm. up Old Amherst Road, up into 116, and I'm looking forward to the Silver Lane up to tying in the Silver, you know, Silver Lane mm -hmm. into North Plain Road. That being said, one of the, um, if you go down Plum Tree Road during the daytime, mm -hmm. it is a, a, amazing the number of people that walk and bike that road. And, and I really, I, I, we could rate presentation for for doing something on that road mm -hmm. and when i looked at it and and again I, I didn't go out in the street with a tape measure to measure but i think one of the biggest concerns was going over the brook by where north plain enters into mm -hmm. there, there could be enough room on that already without having to do anything else and if we if you look i don't think you have to be really creative to come up with um, walkway, uh, a nice walkway down that area. And, and I think it would be a great service to that portion of town. And then all of a sudden now it's tying in with North Plain Road and, and South Plain Road and, and Plum Tree. I think it'd be a wonderful extension. So I'd, I'd like to come talk to you guys about that. So okay. could you please, the next time you have a meeting? Absolutely. Thank great. you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we've been talking about for a while is getting some sidewalks down Plum Tree. Yeah. Oh, we've been talking about it forever and it, and it always dies. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. But I so think it has I love to, you you, prove, you 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 guys have proven that there there are monies available. Um mm -hmm. you, you created yep. you've shown the creativity to get that that funding 
and mm -hmm. and I really and again, if if somebody just has to go down there and instead of doing with the count where someone's taking the count of people your cars on the street, you just look at the number of people. I mean, you you can go on that road and some evenings at six o'clock you can see from one end to the other you can see thirty people and right. probably more people and more it's more it's the amount of people on it is similar very similar to north main street and south main street so we don't have to make you do both sides but it'd be great to be able to I agree. Yeah, even just one side you're right yeah. and i know the police do a good job of patrolling it but people do tend to speed you know up and down that like using it as a connector between 116 and 47. Mm -hmm. right and uh Thank just you, a, a, aside the the uh kayak pavilion has a nice uh, mid-century modern look about it there so that'll be a nice addition to the <laughs> to the area there mm -hmm. but yeah i i haven't heard I, all i've heard is nothing but fantastic things about about the uh the walk and it, it's a great it's a great little walk in the area and it's added a whole lot to the town i gotta say as a uh, future resident um it looks really, really good. Um, as somebody who's used to the amenities in the greater Boston area and seeing the types of stuff that, you know, obviously we have here, it's, it's really nice. Um, it was really exciting to see the project move forward. And um, I think the next, the next phase is going to make it a little bit better. Um, and that's, that's what you got to do. You got to incrementally keep improving what you got. And um, I think this is a really good, Really good project um, by all. Um, and those sheds look sharp. I mean, that may be a shed, that may be yeah. a storage shed, but I got to say, they look real sharp. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Something right out of Dwell Magazine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we, uh, any other comments? Other than thank you all very much for, uh, for coming and all your hard work. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks Good again, night. everybody. Good night. Good night. Hey, Dave. Motion. Um, well, let me just. Uh, I just want to next. Our next meeting is going to be Monday, July thirteenth, and uh, the town office building will be closed on Thursday, July second, in observance of Independence Day. So, um, in light of that, stay safe out there. Remember, fireworks are not legal in Massachusetts, like all the sign says when you come in. So, and uh, actually, you know what, too, I would be remiss. Is there any other public comment in general? No? All right. So we had a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.